Hey, Justin, can you just talk a little bit about how your first uh, NFL bye week went and just kind of what you did uh, during the bye week? Yep. Uh, we worked out a bunch, uh, ran a little bit just to keep our bodies in shape and um, got some time off, got in the cold tubs, um, watched a little film. So uh, nothing crazy by any means, but uh, we got better that week. What did you see in the film uh, and how did you evaluate yourself in the first, in your first four career starts? Um, you know, I thought, I thought we did some really good things. Um, it's unfortunate that we didn't finish those games. And I think finishing in the second half is going to be huge for us. And uh, putting together a full game is what's going to separate us. Justin, are you one of those guys that it's hard on you? Like when you watch film, you critique yourself very hard and you're a guy that is hard on yourself or uh, how, how would you evaluate yourself? I like to think so. Um, I think it's, it's very important that everyone holds each other accountable and um, there are no feelings in any of this. It's, not, it's nothing personal. So um, if I make a mistake, I need to know it and I need to be as hard as, on myself as I am on others. Um, and so I want to be held to the same standard as, as everyone else. Thank you. Chris. Hey, Justin, now that you had an extra week to, to look at Jacksonville, what do you see with, with their defense coming in here on Sunday? Yeah, they're another really well-coached team, um, and they've got some guys that, that really make some plays, and they're a little bit banged up, but uh, that's what's going to happen in the NFL. And um, got some really athletic guys that, uh, you know, we're going to have to watch a lot of film, get prepared for. Um, but they, they, they fly around, and um, they're a really well-coached team. And on the other side, Gardner Minshew, I, I know you guys had some, some shootouts in, in Pac-12. What do you remember about some of those games? Only got to play them once, um, and they, be, they beat us pretty badly at their place. And, um, you know, he's, he's been really fun to watch. And just the way he's, he's handled everything, he's, he's, he's a top-notch guy and um, has a lot of success on the field. And i um, really glad to see a Pac-12 guy like that. Thanks, Justin. Joe. Justin, what do you remember from that game a couple of years ago? Because it wasn't your tip in score wise, it wasn't your typical Pac-12 shootout game. Yeah, I just remember that we lost, um, and we didn't. I don't think we played as well as we could have, and we went on the road and um, you know got beat. And there's nothing around that. Um, and then just with the bye week, did you watch any other games, or just what you gather from watching that? Yeah, Saturday, Sunday, uh, watch some college football, watch some NFL football. Um, just kind of turned on the TV and, and watched whatever game was on. Okay, thanks. Gilbert. Hey, uh, Justin, I have some uh, biology and science questions for you. I know your, your dad and your grandpa were uh, uh, biology teachers, but for you specifically, what did you like about biology so much? Um, I was just really interested with how everything worked out and uh, science and kind of how your body process things and, and kind of explaining the, the natural phenomenon that happened around us. Um, but I knew it when I went to college, I wanted to study something that I was interested in and um, always had a fascination with it. So I knew that uh, when I went there, that's what I wanted to study. I guess, you know, if I'm kind of guessing how these things work, but is it kind of a biologist of think how things work, how animals work, stuff like that? Do you kind of, it might be a reach here, but you kind of apply that to football, how to process things and how things work? Yeah, that, that might be a reach, but, uh, you know, I think it's a, it's a good analogy and um, having a good understanding of, of defenses, coverages, and things like that, um, I think it definitely helps. I figured, Justin, but uh, one more, Justin. If you weren't playing football, do you think you'd be in medical school school right now? Um, if I wasn't playing football, hopefully I'd be coaching the game or somewhere involved in the game. Um, I just love football too much to, to not be around it. And sorry, I said one more, but, Justin, I wanted to ask you about uh, – people describing you as an introvert. Is that accurate or how would you describe your personality? Yeah, I wouldn't say that's fairly accurate. Um, you know, I think on the surface, it, it might appear that way. But uh, when I really get to know people in the team, um, I think a lot of the guys on the team would tell you differently. Thank you, Justin. Cam. Hey, hey, Justin, if you think back to a scouting combine, did you get a chance to rub shoulders and, and communicate with a lot of the rookie quarterbacks, uh, specifically Tua Tagovailoa um, back in Indianapolis? Yeah, Tua wasn't at the, the combine, or he was, but uh, I didn't really get to – I wasn't in his group, um, and so I wasn't in Joe's group either. So I got to hang out with a small group of guys that I was in, in the group with, um, but uh, didn't get to spend too much time with those guys there. If he was to hit you up, what would be your message to him? He's now been named a starter. Um, obviously, you didn't have any time to kind of prepare to be the starter of your team. He's been announced a starter. What would be your advice to him um, taking over the starting role of the NFL team? 
uh, just to keep doing what he's been doing. It's it's been working out, and um, he's an incredible talent, and and the way he prepares for games is exceptional. So uh, keep working hard, and and you know we're going to see him in a couple weeks here. Appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Nick. Hey, Justin, uh, you being in the position, obviously, as a rookie and you have a fellow rookie and, and a running back um, in Joshua Kelly, uh, there's been some talk about his confidence, uh, having confidence issues. Uh, have you been able to speak with him? What advice would you give him as far as just, you know, staying the course and being able to perform at a high level? Josh has been awesome. Um, I've, I haven't seen any of that, any part of that affect his game. And um, you were going to make mistakes. That's going to happen in football. But uh, the way he's battled back and battled through practice and games has been awesome to watch. And um, he's one of those guys I can go for for anything. And um, I know he can come to me for the same thing. So um, I'm always there for him. But, but uh, just the way he's been battling through everything, um, haven't seen a bit of it. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, over Shelley. Hey, Justin, um, I, there's no way you would know this, but my daughter played soccer for the Ducks. And so we're very familiar with all of those great athletic facilities. But I'm curious about your head wrap. Is that pre-wrap? Is it, what's your philosophy on your headband? Oh, the headband, it's just a, a hair tie. It's, it's nothing special. And um, Well, they used to use pre-wrap all the time. I've never done that personally. Um, I've just stick, stuck with the headband, so I don't know anything about it. You just want the hair out of your face, right? True, correct. Is that the, the objective? Yeah, it gets a little messy sometimes. <laughs> well, mine too, but there's nothing I can do. Okay, that's all I got. Thank you. Dennis, go ahead. Hey, Justin, um, can you talk about um, how important it is for you and the offense to come out strong in the third quarter after intermission? Yeah, it's huge. That's one of the focuses uh, of the week. And kind of like I mentioned earlier, putting together a full game. Uh, you know, I think we played pretty good football in the first half and at times in the fourth quarter, but putting together a full a full game, all four quarters, um, is what's going to separate us. All right. Thank you. Fernando, back to you. Hey, Justin. Uh, it seemed like the first two, your first two starts, uh, you and Mike were kind of, um, you guys didn't really, uh, you guys weren't really involved in the offense together, but then against New Orleans, it seems like you really, uh, you felt comfortable throwing to Mike. Do you feel like that relationship has grown uh, and it grew in uh, in New Orleans? Um, I th it's definitely grown, uh, but I think it's always been present. Um, and I think Mike's an exceptional talent and um, all throughout camp and all throughout uh, the year so far, uh, he's been a target and, um, you know, just didn't get the opportunity to throw him the ball as much um, in those first two games, but uh, he, he's, done a great job of battling through that and fighting. And, uh, you know, it, it's apparent uh, that last that last game against the Saints where he steps up big. And what, what do you think makes him unique now that you've gotten to play with him a couple of times? Uh, what do you think makes him unique uh, as a receiver? I think his size and athleticism. Um, I'm not sure how many people that that big can can move as well as he can and just the way he can high point the ball and um, can catch any ball that you put in the vicinity. So um, just the, the combination of that makes him uh, really unique. He said on uh, after the game that he just told you, throw it up there. It might not look pretty, but I'll make the grab. When you threw that pass to him uh, and he came down with it, were you, did it kind of impress you? Because, I mean, obviously you hadn't seen it. And last year he really made a name for himself doing that kind of stuff. Uh, were you impressed by when, when you threw it up and he was able to come down with that, with that catch? Really impressed. Um, you know, that's something that we saw during camp and, um, you know, early parts of the season. And uh, just got to put it up there. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be pretty by any means. You just got to have to give him a chance. And um, I know that when he goes up, um, it's not going to be a 50-50 ball. It's more like an 80-20. Thanks, Justin. Uh, Jeff. Justin, you, there's been a lot of good things said about you the last month or so. When you when that stuff, if you're in front of a TV and that comes on, do you, do you make a point to turn off the TV or do you, do you not want to hear that stuff or you just listen to it like anybody else? Um, I think one of the great things that, that I've been taught is is to not let it really affect me. And so I haven't really been exposed to any of that. And everything that I've kind of been focused on and listening to is what's been being said in this building or by my parents or previous coaches. So, um, you know, I've done a good job of kind of staying away from the noise and uh, really what's ever happening on the outside. Do you, so on that vein or in that vein, do you, do you like not watch ESPN, for example? Um, we don't really have a whole lot of time to watch TV, so... 
uh, when I get home at night, normally it's, it's to go to bed. Um, but uh, on the weekend when you're watching football games, I think that's kind of the pretty much the only time I'm watching TV. Okay, thanks. All right, we've got three more, Justin. Uh, let's go to Gilbert. Hey, uh, Justin, I just remember that Marcus Mayorota was a general science major at Oregon, and I think you were as well. Did you guys ever discuss science classes at Oregon? No, we never did. He was, he was there a couple of years before I got there, um, so I didn't get to, to talk to him about that. Thank you. Uh, Pop. Hey, Justin, just, I want to get your thoughts and perspective on the idea of, of football IQ. Obviously, there are some differences between just being an intelligent person, like book smart, and then being a smart football player and having, you know, a high football IQ. I'm just curious, how, how, how similar or different do you feel like those two things are, just general intelligence and football IQ? Yeah, I think being a, a smart student and being able to pick up things quickly uh, it definitely helps with uh, learning the offense and studying defenses. But um, I think there's an aspect, like you said, of having a smart football IQ of knowing what to do in certain situations, where you are on the field, what down it is. Um, there's a whole lot that goes into it that experience is probably the biggest teacher. I mean, so being, being around the game, playing through, through downs and stuff like that, I think that's the most important teacher. And just since you've gotten to the NFL and been in the building with the Chargers, how much has your football IQ grown, do you think? I think quite a bit. Um, you know, I think just playing through experience and playing through downs, I've never played in the NFL prior to this year. So I, I didn't know any differently. Um, but having stepped through and, and go through all these these games, you know, you pick up quite a bit. And um, one of our coaches leads us through a smart ball um, every Thursday or Friday where we just talk about situations that happened the previous week and things like that. So um, every week we're, we're learning. Is that Pep who, who, who does that, the, the smart, smart ball you're talking about? Coach Smash. Okay. And then, is it, so it's just for you, is it more gaining the experiences on the field and going through that? Or is it more the studying that you've done and being in the playbook that has allowed you to grow in terms of your football IQ? Probably a combination of both. Um, you know, I think studying and, and doing that is great and you learn a lot, but uh, going through it and, and experiencing is a whole other aspect. So um, anytime you can do both, uh, I think that's going to be great. Thank you. All right, last one, Joe, go ahead. Justin, you guys have been struggling most of the time as far as uh, first down production and uh, trying to uh, stay on script. Just what's the one adjustment or th thing that you guys can do to kind of eliminate that? I think we can keep executing. I think we've done a great job of practicing and, and going through the week and, and having a, a game plan that we've followed. And um, kind of like we mentioned earlier, I think it's the third quarter that, that has, has tripped us up the most. And I think we played some pretty good football in the first half. And um, thankfully, thankfully, we've got four downs instead of just one. So um, I know that we're always attacking on those downs and, and we're looking forward to moving the ball. And then your uh, former offensive coordinator makes his debut this weekend for UNLV. Had a chance to uh, catch up or talk to him? Yeah, we've been talking a bunch over the past couple of months and um, he's always been there for me and one of the greatest role models that I've ever had. And, um, you know, I, I can't wait to watch him and, and see what he's able to do with that program. Okay, thanks. All right, Justin, thanks for the time. Thank you. All right, guys, we got Mike Williams stepping up. So if you have any questions.